Okay, I'm not going to do anything too wild or crazy on this one. It's just another melee combat, but we're not going to stack or anything like that. So we still have some of the same decisions to make with respect to... Let me get this up here. Maybe I look underneath here. With respect to these three units versus these three units. We can still do a two to one, or we can do a two to one here, and just a one to one here, and not make any attack up here. Or make no attacks. Or, you know, there's different ways you can do it. I'm going to go back to the combat table real quick here. For melee combat, anyway. Hopefully, I can do this without wrecking stuff too much. Um, you'll notice that on the melee table, as well as the fire results table, there are no results that affect the attacker. So, you know, if you have a shot at anything, even a one to three, you know, you might as well, well, you have to have a bonus. You have to have a plus one bonus for attacking a uh, disrupted unit. But if you got one to two, you might as well just go ahead and, you know, you got a one in six chance of uh, achieving an effect. So, you know, even one to ones, two to one, three to one, you know, go ahead and make the attack because nothing's going to hurt you. Uh, all the combat results affect the defender only. So, really, no shot is a, is a bad one for the most part or one melee combat. So, come back down <clears throat> to our example here. Find our focus again. We could just make a one to one attack across the board. So we'll just start over here. One to one, one to one, and one to one. These are all melee attacks. We're going from left to right. Zoom back in there. Ooh, sorry. First one is a three at one to one, and that is nothing. I'll tell you right now. Sorry for the shadows and everything. Okay, we're going to make another one-to-one -one attack. Middle column. Roll the three, that is a miss. And finally, the right-hand column. The three. All three misses in melee. Now, obviously, <clears throat> making the lower odds attacks are going to give you lower odd results. So, yes, it would make sense to double up, triple up, whatever, to at least achieve something... Uh, on a local, at a local level, instead of just making broad, weak attacks across the whole board. So, uh, I'm going to come up with uh, missile fire in the next one. Okay, in this example, we're going to include both fire and shock units. I've added basically militia muskets to the pike units, and I've also included a rider cavalry unit for the green side. At the top, on the blue side, I have added two musket units. We are going to assume that stacking is two. Mm, let's say that blue has stacking of three and green has a stacking of two, which was how it was in one of the first scenarios I played. Um, but basically the same fact, uh, same type of combat, except that we don't worry about the defender's defense strength. Everything is based upon, um, let's see if I can find my table here, everything is based upon the terrain that the defender occupies. Oh, come on here, where's my terrain effects chart? Well, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Whatever terrain the uh, defender occupies is what we use for its defense. So in clear terrain, that's a three. So you're going to figure your odds by basically <clears throat> determining how far away your target is. That's your range attenuation. Um, all of these will be within their normal range. Uh, normal range, so their combat strengths won't change. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's see. And everything will be taken towards the defense of the terrain. Uh, I've seen that before in other games. I can't. I think uh, the Labat La series uses something similar to that. So, sorry about my shadows, but I'm using my phone, which is the best camera I have. Woo! That was a football. So, this is about the best I can do at the moment.
I apologize. So we're going to say that it's blue turn this time, and it is their <coughs> missile fire combat, uh, fire combat uh, sequence, phase, whatever it is I'm looking for. Um, I do have a Reuter, I think I've mentioned that already, a Reuter unit here which can participate in both uh, missile and melee. Because it's one is not parenthesized, so it can actually engage in uh, melee if it wants. But right now we're doing fire. Fire are the numbers in the upper left and right hand corner of the units. Whoa, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I need to get some kind of stand for this. Okay, so right here we're going to take all these guys and we're going to fire on the rider unit there. Um, reader. Maybe it's Reader. I don't know. Or, on second thought, we're going to fire at the units right straight ahead of us. So what I have is basically two fire units, the two muskets, and we can't use the pike right now. So I basically have an 8 to 3. This whole clear hex are all, all considered a defense of 3. 8 to 3 is going to be a 2 to 1 on the fire results table. I don't add anything because nobody's disrupted, blah, blah, blah. So the result is a 2 on the 2 to 1, which is nothing. We'll take us up to the fire table here real quick. You can see that uh, rolling a 2 gave us nothing at 2 to 1. Okay, the next one will be... Let's go ahead and fire on the same target, which is in the middle column there in the blue. We'll fire on the same... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, target that the other one did. So it's going to be a 4 to 3 or a 1 to 1. That's a 5. 5 at 1 to 1 is going to get us a disruption. On fire combat, I'm use my rules here since I have the effects on the back side. Fire combat disruption. The topmost unit in the hex under attack is marked with a disruption marker but it does not have to retreat. If other units are in the same hex, the disrupted unit is placed at the bottom of the stack. So, basically, where am I? There I am. So, basically, the top unit takes a disruption, he flips over, and he goes to the bottom of the stack to reflect his disruption status. He doesn't have to retreat or anything, so he can just stay right there. There. There we go. And then finally, the last unit is going to attack. The, this unit here is going to attack over here. Pretty much the same thing, 4 to 3 for clear terrain. And that's going to be a 1 to 1 fire attack. And I rolled a 4. Let's see what 4 does. Make sure I get the right column here. We have 4 on 1 to 1. It looks like a disruption as well. So, uh, fired at the middle stack. So the top unit takes a disruption. Disruption, I guess I'll show you what I'm doing here instead of just having you guess. Okay, so <clears throat> disruption basically takes a unit out of uh, gameplay for a turn. Units will automatically undisrupt at the end of their player turn. So for the next, the Greens player turn, he will be without his muskets for one for his turn and then they'll uh, rally. So if it's a blue player's turn, that's it. Then he would get to move, and then he'd get to use his melee combat abilities, in which case the muskets would not have any play in it. Uh, at the beginning of the movement phase, you can change stacking order. So if you wanted to, you could put your muskets down at the bottom and bring your pikes up. Um, anyway, that's kind of an example of some of the various types of combat. I was going to just kind of work over here on just kind of just <clears throat> playing around with different formations and stuff. And since there are no zones of control, I don't think it's advisable to leave gaps between units. And I guess that was true of the tactics of that day. Units uh, fought pretty closely packed together <clears throat> because there is a flanking rule. It kind of covers the, the lack of facing. And that is basically... If I have a unit, eh, give me a pike unit, there it is. If we were attacking that way, right here would be 
Um, they call them concentric attacks now, but that would be a flanking attack. Or, maybe another green unit here, sorry. That would also be, well, I guess I'll show you what I'm talking about. That would also be a flanking attack. As long as all of the hexes around a unit are adjacent to an enemy unit, Basically, if they're all in the zone of control, there there is no zone of control, but there is a zone of control. Then that would be a flanking attack, gaining a uh, defender, or the attacker would be doubled, so that would be what, 8 times, what if it's melee, it's 8, and 8 is 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22. So, anyway, that's about all I have right there for combat. Like I said, I was just playing around with some formations and stuff like that because my next game besides my practice game I just played is going to be I think Breitenfeld so I'm going to try and play Breitenfeld one of my favorite battles as well as Lutzen, Marston Moor, Edge Hill those are some of my favorite battles from that time period um, anyway I've chatted along long enough I guess so when my next video appears I will be pretty much right into gameplay. I'm not going to go ahead and explain the rules. I'm not going to give you a play-by-play -play all the time. It's just going to be my playing of the game. and You can critique it or comment, criticize, whatever. That's fine. Just leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think. And until then, talk to you later. Take care.